Life on the canal, it's lovely. People are all friendly. You see different scenery every day, different seasons. It's just a idyllic life. The boat was built by Harland Wolf in 1935 for the Grand Union Carrying Company. Initially, she was taken over by the War Department and worked as a fireboat on the Thames during the war. There's just room for it to turn round if this boat's over there. Then she did some carrying for the Grand Union Company till the canals were nationalised when she became property of British Waterways Board and she ended up life as a maintenance boat for them, working, uh, carrying stuff to repair the canals and uh, the locks etc. You're not behaving yourself today, Cabentian. You don't need to be Charles Atlas, but you need to be able to lift 25 kilogram bags of coal and occasionally people will have uh, 10 or 20, so you've got to be fit enough to do that in one go. <laughs> So if he comes, oh, okay. tend to come and give me a shout and I'll back back up here and he can bring his boat out to me. Yeah, if Fred comes down out of there then... You can sit there, you can cook, you can do everything. <laughs> boats in my 20s uh, I always wanted to live on a boat and then just over 10 years ago I got back into it bought a boat that I lived on and then eventually I bought this one to restore and decided I had enough work in the old 9 to 5 routine and wanted to work for myself so started doing this So I travel around with my dog Cassie, she's a rescue dog. And I got her just before I started doing 
this. So I wouldn't, I've always been a dog lover, but I wouldn't have one while I was working for somebody else for a living. There we are. Thank you very much. Being five inches down, it makes a big difference. That's why she's not running properly. Well, the canal is over 2,000 miles altogether. I stick mostly to the Midlands. I do go south occasionally, north occasionally, just for different do's, different uh, boat gatherings. There's a wide network all over the country. Yeah, the worst I had was a uh, spring mattress in Nuneaton. I was on a towing job, but it stopped the engine dead. And I spent four and a half hours actually in the canal cutting it off. It wasn't a pleasant experience. Mostly I spend the winter from sort of September through till May travelling up and down the canal, it's got a fixed route, um, selling coal, gas, diesel. Then in the summer I do the odd towing job when I'm asked to do them. Um, and then in boat maintenance during the summer mainly, plus a few of the shows. That's my year. <laughs> Not round here, I can't, no. No, they do it over the yard, you see. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so obviously, and we buy from the yard, so it's not in our interest. Traditionally, the boats had roads and castles on them. It started, it's a throwback from the, the gypsies that were originally, became the first boatmen. It's the old Romany style, same as on the gypsy caravans. And it started from that. <laughs> The season starts next week, so we go up to Shackleston Festival next weekend, and then uh, we'll go down to Rugby, up to Coventry, then back in the uh, Trenton Mersey. I've got to try my try string guitar, there's too many bloody strings on it. <laughs> so I said to Paddy, said, Where did you play that? I said, I don't know, but it's all in there somewhere, no matter what piece of music you want, it's in it's there. It's there, it's finding it, see, It's finding the bugger. Uh, <laughs> well, that's lovely, nice instrument, mate. It's a beauty, isn't it? You must be pleased with that, innit? <laughs>
Up to the window there. Yeah. Turn around outside the pub and back into the marina. Yeah, just wait for Drew. And then you get to see the boats looking like this one. Gravener was my dad's middle name and Dorothy was my mum's middle name. So it's Gravener Boating Company, Dorothy Wharf. But we actually call the top end of the marina Dorothy Wharf now. <laughs> Everybody knows it as that. <laughs> 